I'm at a gypsy. I mean, I don't know if you've heard me, but I'm like the 350 fucking of the, of the church of 350. Oh, the guru, the guy. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> I'm the church of 350. I attend every Sunday. And, uh, and I just tell, I, I mean, I've got a lot of DMs of people that have said that they've bought a 350 after the complete like heretic that I've come for them. But it's just the move. And I wish, like, can you imagine how incredible a YZF350 would be? Mm. Bro, are you Dude. serious? I'm, I'm going to your church, brother. Let's <laughs> sing together because I've been praising this shit for a long time. I'm like, Yamaha, what in the actual hell why aren't you would sell every single one of those bikes like every single one it's crazy be insane. it's crazy that they don't do it the 250f that the current yzf250 or yz250f however it said is absolutely sensational as a as a motorcycle the suspension is sensational the feeling of the motor is sensational the chassis is sensational cable clutch i really enjoy on that bike make it into a 350 and it would be the best bike oh. hands down that is i mean it would be insane uh i guess the competition that you'd then see with with ktm but it's like dude for the for the, the average guy that for whatever reason there's people that still don't want to buy ktms and even though the 350 is there mm. and i think that it's like it's by far for me the best bike in in their lineup it's what i own and i'll probably i've got a 2020 i'm probably going to buy a 2023 but it's like and even that i've got a 2020 it's three years old and it's still unbelievably good but there's so many people that don't want to buy ktms for whatever reason that it's like if honda yamaha kawasaki if they did 350s man it oh my god they it would change everything for so many people Dude, I, I told KTM this and I've written about it in my articles and, and spoke about it in the videos is like if KTM would just put some spring forks on their bike, uh, they would kill everybody in the shootouts. Uh, the air fork t technology has come a long way, but man, like you build a KTM 350 with spring forks, match that up with a good shock. It's game over. Like. Yeah. That bike is insane. Like yeah. that's the only downfall to KTM's. The KTM's are reliable now. They don't feel foreign anymore. Like you don't go on a KTM like, ah, oh, this feels weird. It feels normal. It's just the only thing that's holding it back a little bit is that air fork because it's a little pain in the ass to to kind of dial in. So I, I'm with you, man. I, you need to make up shirts, Church of 350. I'll yeah. buy some. I'll, yeah. I'll help you here in SoCal. We'll get on the board and the, like, uh, Here's the thing. I don't I don't want to say that it's never going to happen because I've heard rumblings like like hey, don't don't always believe the, like hey, we're not going to make them. They still might do it. I just don't know how soon they're going to be able to do it because um the Japanese are a little bit behind a little bit from the Austrians. I think the Austrians been changing the way our market is getting, you know, being sold. Uh, people are changing their minds about uh, the brands of bikes and the size of bikes and how many they create for guys that want to ride off road and moto yeah. or, you know, there's just so many things that KTM does really well um, that the Japanese is going to have to get on board or they're going to get left behind. I just, I don't understand why it's taken or like it's, it's, it hasn't even taken so long. Like they're just still not even considering it. But it's like the the sales of the 350 should speak for itself. Like, shouldn't the Japanese look at KTM and look at what they've done with the 350 and how many bikes they sell globally and just go like, okay, there's definitely a market for this and we're just losing, we're losing people. And the, then the thing that KTM does so well, and so I've got a TC125 2019 and I've got a KTM 350 2020. That's my my bikes. Mm -hmm. I've got the new MX Tech A kit forks, like their um, blackjack forks that they've done the forty nine mil, mm -hmm. and I've got their National Shock, and that's in both of those both of those bikes, and they handle unbelievably well. Like I don't need anything else from those bikes. But the thing is, right, is 
And I think that this is what the Japanese don't understand. Once you lose somebody to KTM, you lose them kind of forever because the wheels transfer over, (laughs) the suspension transfers over, every single part on that bike pretty much bar the motor. Like I got a new exhaust for my 350. I gave my old one to Ronan who works here and he rides a KTM 250. So there's just like, there's all Mm -hmm. of these things that you know the japanese almost it's lost on them that they they lose so you're going to lose somebody because they've got a 350 and then they're just you lose them for good like i got um i don't know if you know eli uh more from red bull uh brodacross yeah so like he that's that was him like he was on japanese bikes and then he went to ktm and got a 350 and then he was like i'm gonna switch it up i'm gonna get a 450 guess what brandy got he got a ktm so it's like they're just they're losing people because of this one bike and then for me now my off-road bike i'll get a i'll get a a gas gas 350 or you know like it'll be a 350 again so it's just mind-boggling to me it's like the sales are there the proof is in the pudding and you just don't want to make that bike and again yamaha has like the best platform 250 build that thing out into a 350 the KTMs this year, the 250 and the 350 share the complete same bottom end. So that can be done. And mm. then you've got this whole new mark. Like I would, I don't get any help from KTM. So I would go and just, I'd go buy one of those bikes. You know what I mean? But and it seems, it seems crazy to me, dude. But I might, uh, I might be doing a trip to Japan to meet with a manufacturer and I'm going to try and be extremely persuasive <laughs> in my time with that manufacturer Look to make a 350. You, Just make one for me at least. <laughs> you, right. So I've been around the Japanese engineers and dude, they're, and I've been around the Austrian engineers, but the Japanese engineers are some of the most smartest people I've ever met in my life. Like smart, polite, great people, but the Japanese culture and in these manufacturers it takes, it's it's slow, time. it's yeah. like behind yeah. the times. It just takes a long time for anything to get done, let alone a motorcycle, right? Like you wanna be set up as a vendor or something, it just takes, there's so much red tape and process with just the little things. I can imagine what it'll be like to build a brand new motorcycle, right? Mm. And I can tell you this, like when they started, hey, we want to build the YZ400, that was in the works for a long time. Like Honda had to do that first. And that's what got them out of their shell, right? Well, Honda's building this 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 bike, we gotta do something. Um, and then that's what kind of raised them up. And I think KTM will make that happen for the other brands. I just think we're impatient because we know how good it could be. Yeah, and so I guess like, what's your opinions then? of why the 350 is better for that average kind of guy. Like I'd say most, most guys. So like for my 350 is not slow by the way. Like, so I've got a piston just to, we put a new piston in it, like not a, not a comp thing or anything. I think it might have a little bit more comp with like head gaskets and shit. And then it's got the mm-hmm. port and polish on the head. It's got a full pro circuit exhaust and it's been fully mapped and tuned on a dyno with a vortex and it's got 55 horsepower like the thing is awesome but it's not it it doesn't give me the negative feelings that a 450 gives me so i guess like what's your like what's your pitch to the average guy on why they are better so to be pretty just vanilla and simple it's it's crank mass. It's the inertia yep. of the yep. motorcycle. The inertia of the 350 feels more like a 250 versus a 450. The crank mass of the 450 and that inertia makes side to side movement, acceleration stopping a lot more pronounced and heavier feeling. With the 350, even though on paper, it's literally, I think, one pound lighter than a 450 the the whole bike itself feels as light and i still say this to this day i think it feels lighter than a 250 at times because it has more grunt and rpm response than a 250 does but feels so peppy and light that i don't get that overwhelming feeling that i get on my 450 when i'm let's face it i'm 10 12 minutes into a moto you're starting to feel a little bit 450 you're like you gotta kind of tippy toe around some things 
because you know that you're getting tired. With the 350, it feels more bicycle-ish than anything yeah. else because I can just kind of place it and put it and, and do the things that I want to do with it more than a 450. And you got a 20. The new 23 350 has more power. Like it, like when I went from the 22 to the 23, I was like, holy crap, man, it actually has some bottom in now. I don't need, you know, the Vortex anymore. I feel like for the average guy, like it runs clean, it has bottom in. There's plenty of power there. And the beauty of a 350 versus a 450 for me is I can be lazy in different areas. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like, if I wanna, I'm tired, I wanna leave in second gear, I don't feel like shifting. I'll just let that son of a bitch rev out because it'll rev very, very far. Yeah. Uh, or I wanna be lazy in another area. I'm in third gear, I made a mistake. Oh shit, I forgot to downshift. It'll lug pretty damn well for a 350. Like I feel like a little fan of the clutch. You're right back in that me, the power. So there's just a wide parameter for a rider. You wanna be lazy vet guy, sure. Or you wanna be an aggressive, hyperactive, 20 some year old kid and rev the shit out of it it does that as well it just gives us riders more room to kind of work around the track you can do different things but i will say this i'm guilty of the dick measuring thing as well because when i go race i'm like oh, i still need a 450 but i just ridden uh 23 350 with just a couple things like what you said a vortex and a muffler and i'm like dude i didn't rethink my rethink my whole program here because I feel like I can last longer, still get a good enough start to be competitive. I just got smoked by Mike Brown at Loretta Lynn's and he was on a 350 and that thing ripped off the start. Yeah. So it's like the 350 is, uh, is that ultimate, you know, machine that you, you know, you're pushing over here. And I just think it takes a little bit of coaxing, uh, for these older guys to kind of get on board with a new displacement. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.